Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for episode number 37, I want to say. And this one is a slightly different episode, as we alluded to in the previous um, show, which was our end of year show. We're here, 1st of January, and one of the things that I've seen in the comment section a few times um, earlier on in the series was that people want to see what's happening in the rest of the world of wrestling. And I figured the best time to do that would be at the end of the calendar year because we can kind of look at ourselves, look at the TEW end of year awards and also just take a look at, you know, what everyone else is doing in the world. Uh, so I think what we'll do in this episode, we'll just take a quick look at ourselves to begin with. Um, there's not too much to look at because we kind of covered it in the last one. And then we'll look at the TEW awards and then we will go to the feds section and just uh, take a look at all of the big company so all the ones that are bigger than us obviously we'll spend a bit more time with the big big boys so like wwe AEW, look at the champions things like that um but there's quite a lot of medium companies now in this save because i believe impact ring of honor um someone else is now medium so there's a few to look at but either way let's jump straight back to the office and just look at ourselves so as we saw last episode we are one popularity point away from medium which means i think in the next episode at some point we will get a little news item telling us that we've hit medium um so hopefully we can put on a good show to get us there uh, in terms of finances we're, we're doing good we're making big money so we're going to keep going with this for a while we are part of the global wrestling consortium so the four of us we share a pot of money so i think we're at a point now where we're probably making profit on our own but when we hit medium we are going to start signing um some exclusive deals with existing wrestlers and some newer ones so we kind of just want to keep hold of this for now because these guys all seem to be quite smart with their money so yeah uh what else do we want to look at um there's no point in just going through creative because we've seen this already i'll just look at the top few i'll just click through them now you can see them pause if you want uh, hot prospects talk to talk showstoppers ring generals who's hot who's not no one perfect and this is just yeah not signing any of these hopefully when we hit medium this will update and we'll get some better suggestions but hey ho figurehead we don't have one but quite a few people who could be i mean he's overshadowed by others he's a better heel than a baby face not currently a baby face um bobby guns has more charisma than joe anawaii bobby guns Great charisma. Everything else is crap, though. Uh, Drew Galloway? Um, yeah. Not really the best. Uh, roster, we don't need to look at. You've seen the roster. Stable. So, yeah, obviously, we do actually have a stable now, which is Anawaii Global. So, Joe Anawaii. And in the last episode, we saw the debut of Chaz Betts. El Hijo del Fantasma joined Anawaii in the previous episode to that. Uh, Madoka Kakuta has been there since day one. And, of course, Diamante and Ishin had to join the uh, Anawaii Global because they lost and Soraya also debuted at the event and seemingly joined them which of course she has so actually one thing that we should do now is we should make Anawaii the manager of everyone here maybe actually no, not everyone I think he should be manager of Soraya, Chaz, Kakuta so everyone but uh, Diamante and Ishin. So let's actually do that now. So, bu 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 Chaz Betts. Let's go here. Manager Joe. Save. And then we've got um, Al Hijo. Uh, manager Joe. And then who else did we say? Madoka. Boom. Manager. Joe, no, Joe, and then Soraya, boom, manager, Joe, and we also should make her manager to Joe and Hawaii, who would have thought that good old Paige, aka Soraya, would be managing Roman Reigns, aka Joe and Hawaii, because <laughs> I didn't. Anyways, look at those numbers though. Oh, I'm so glad we got him on an exclusive written contract. 5k per show, but he's worth every penny. Um, 
yeah, so there's that. Uh, teams that need to look at titles we saw in the last one as well. We'll all quickly review them again. We've got Drew Galloway, our king of the Lariat League. Our queen of the Lariat League is Rina Yamashita. Prince of the Lariat League is the newly crowned Ricky Knight Jr. Knights of the Lariat League is, you know, two members of the global um, empire. So that's Chaz Betts and El Hijo del Fantasma. And then our London's own, our first London's own champion is Pac. I'm very excited to see his reign and what he does with that. Um, I don't think I've shown you guys some of this stuff. So announcers, we've just had William Regal do everything. Um, so when we hit media, I'm definitely looking to bring in someone with him. So that should be good. I mean, Chris Brooks um, can do it. His numbers aren't the best though, so we're not going to do that. Broadcasting again, we're going to wait till medium, but we've just been doing YouTube. So we really haven't been making much money. So it'll be good to get a TV deal once we hit medium somewhere, paying something. But we will keep YouTube as well. So obviously, um, YouTube is just good for outreach. Like everyone, like that reaches everyone in the world. So yeah, apart from China, but China's not in the game. So it's all right. Coverage. Um, yeah, that's just our coverage everywhere. You know, it's pretty good to be fair. Uh, events and TV, I don't really need to look at that. The schedule is going to stay the same. Um, I'm going to keep all of these events for another year. And then maybe as we get bigger, we might add more. I'm not too sure. We'll see. Uh, show history. Top 100s. We might as well look at this. We'll review ourselves. So our best show was actually our season finale, which was London's Calling. Let's take a quick look at that card again and remind ourselves. Match of the night being Drew Galloway defeating Ashton Smith to win the king of the Lariat League title, but we also got some great matches, 79 rated, three-way uh, tag team match, Tyler Bate, Trent Seven went to a 72, Joe Anawai's in-ring debut, televised debut against Madoka Kakuta, 76, which sparked the idea of a global empire, uh, Rini Yamashita uh, retaining her title against Aishere and Mega Main in a 77, the Kara Noir Chris Brooks um, exhibition match, which was meant to be Shun Skywalker, but again, it's happened one too many times where Shun Skywalker has just not bothered appearing. And then, of course, Timothy Thatcher with an 81 defeating Mark Andrews and then, you know, invoking the new rule. And then a week later, fucking off Ring of Honor. So we're going to check Timothy Thatcher out just to see how he's doing in Ring of Honor and what his numbers are like. But yeah, that was our show of the year. Matches of the year, we had quite a few big boys. I mean, well, look at this. We're a small company and we've almost got 20 80 plus matches um match of the year being uh pack tyler bait uh what a match that was a 93 and then we obviously had drew galloway ashton smith at london's calling timothy thatcher el hijo that was a long time ago that was early this year in march uh thatcher defeating pack and claudio uh, that was a number one contenders match was an 86 and then drew and ashton in their last man standing match again was an 85 and Tyler Bate Leon Slater as well they killed it Leon Slater is definitely someone I'm going to be looking to mold a bit more uh, but yeah we've got some great matches here um, really really good workers and I think pretty much all of these are still about I mean Kota Ibushi's gone now um, yeah everyone else is still here for now so winner oh wait hold on we're not done yet are we so we had events matches um, what else is there? Attendances, yeah, sure. I mean, we've got you can see the growth here. Um, <clears throat> our pay per view in June had only 3,000, and by the time December came around, our weekly shows had around 3,000. Um, Riot then jumped up to 4,000, London's calling 10,000, Clock Site 12, 13,000. Buy rates, we didn't have any buy rates. TV ratings, yeah, Clock Strikes 12 had the best TV rating love that and then viewerships of course clock strikes 12 because it's our biggest show of the well not our biggest show but when at the peak of our popularity um but yeah i think that's pretty much everything to look at um nothing here we need to look at um no 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 no. when we hit medium though i am tempted to do a drug test because i always think it's funny just to see who gets flagged um and then we can really decide how much i like them merchandise is something i haven't looked at in ages we've got it at normal but I've seen some people say that we do rapid. I'll give you 25% progress, 12. So that's double. And it's only a little it's extra 75 per week. At the next level, you should be getting around 50p or cents per fan at live shows and one pound per popularity point per region. We're at level one. How do we upgrade? 
Most of us are virtually non-existent. Okay, we should really upgrade this, shouldn't we? Start upgrade? What, don't, what does that mean? Stop upgrade? I've got your merchandise operation to a bracket approach at the moment. You are 0% of the way towards. Okay, so I think that's just how you do it. Sure. I never really looked at merchandise, to be honest. Um, production. We don't need to. So we're minimum all of this. Uh, our rivals levels. Let's have a look. Uh, we're above all of them. We're at the same for progress. Should we up this? Does any of this actually help us, really? Um... Custom, high quality, ring aprons, yeah, work professional, that's decent. In-house, musician straight, custom made tracks for you, uh, entrance music videos, that's fine. Um, I mean, I'm sure we'll need to upgrade this when we hit medium, so we'll leave that for now. Uh, no promises size, ticket prices, we've still got very cheap, so I think for events we're going to go cheap. We're going to keep TV shows at very cheap. Yeah. So if we have it at cheap, how much are we making per event? Okay, so we're going to be 59, so it'll be 17 per person. Whereas um, a TV show ticket at very cheap is 11 per person. So can we put that to normal and that at cheap? Maybe we'll change this once we've hit medium. But events we'll put at cheap for now, we'll save that. Um, training facilities, we do have the Ports and School of Wrestling. We bought that off of Rev Pro, I want to say. Um, we've had a few people come in, some, some graduates come in, but they've all been complete dog shit. So I've rejected them all so far. Um, but we could, um, it costs us 15,000. How much would, it, would we get? We get 108,000. We don't really need to sell. Um, the higher level the better the quality students who graduate the higher level the more students so we should probably up this i'd say cost us thirty thousand. hold on what, which one's which training okay so upgrade training that'll take it to 60 percent okay cost us forty thousand. fuck it fifty thousand. yep that's 80%, okay. And then if we upgrade facilities, your running costs would rise, but how much would it rise to, as in like, is there not like a metric for this? Hold on. Every time during those are liable to be an even split between male and female. What does that mean, alter? Even split, graduation, fluid. No, even split, yeah, I agree with that, save. Um, so, Surely going up 1% isn't going to make that much of a difference. Is there any information here? Uh, facility level. Maximum being 12. Okay. To upgrade and train level does not raise the monthly running costs. Okay. Lack of graduates. There are four reasons. I mean, I've been getting them, so... Sorry, I'm taking too much time on this. Let's get that to 50. So, 35, 45, 50. And what does that mean? We get five each year. Okay. Let's get it. Let's do it so we can get six each year. I'll grade five percent. What's that? Six each year. Okay, so that's one one every two months, you could say. We've just spent a load of money, but hey ho. Uh, let's close that and save. Just that did definitely save 80, 55. Can we get that to 60? Because 55 is a horrible number. 60, okay. Cool. Alright, I think that's enough of us. Um let's look at the global. TW Awards. And there we go. Spoiler straight away. Wrestler of the Year. For the third time apparently is Kenny Omega. We will look at the Power 500 here. Just to see the rest of the list. And where the LLW guys ended up. Company of the Year is WWE. Based on their performance of the past 12 months. Fourth time that they've won this trophy. Team of the Year. Phantasmambo. Of course not. It is the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson, for the eighth time. Wow. Match of the year. Is it going to be Tyler Bate Pack? Of course not. It was uh, WrestleMania Sunday 41, where Gunther defeated Matt Riddle. Oh. Show of the year was Wrestle Kingdom 19. Can we double click and see that? No, we'll just have to search out in a bit. Young Wrestler of the Year is Dante Martin. First time he won the award. Well done, Dante Martin. Veteran Wrestler, CM Punk, still going strong. I think he's currently 
<coughs> the AEW World Champion, because in this save he is still at AEW. Female Wrestler of the Year is Sayuri. Um, is that the first time she's won it? Yeah, because normally, whenever I've done a real world mod, it's uh, Mayu Iwatami that wins every single year, no matter what. Most Improved Company, way for the third time, isn't it? Third time? Um, coveted most in English for the final year of growth. Well, let's continue. I think we've won this every year so far, so that just goes to show how great we've been. Independent Wrestler of the Year is Pack. It's Pack. One of our wrestlers has won Wrestler of the Year. The bastard Pack. Oh, that's made me have very happy. Awesome. Manager of the Year, Chris Jericho. I wonder who he's managing. Can we see? Um, he's retired, but he's now just a manager. I don't think we can see who he's managing. That's annoying. Um, announcer of the year, don't care. Jim Ross, call color commentator Alex Abrahentes has become that. And referee of the year as not our referee. Cool. Well, we've got two awards at the end of your awards. I think that's twice as many as I thought we'd get because I, I, I was pretty confident we'd get this. Did not think that one of our guys would be independent wrestler of the year. And just to check to see how much LLW he did in 2025 he left in june so half of the year he was llw so i think you know oh and also ncl whatever ncl is but they're poor performances the rest of it's all us um the fact that he's had better performances with us than with aew is telling uh but either way we've got the awards let's quickly check the power 500 um you can just take a look here i'm not going to be reading all the names out but matt riddle second volta aka Gunther is third Darby Allen's up there Ilya Dragunov as well and this is the man just want to let you guys know this is the man I tried to sign I'd say three in-game weeks ago his contract was running out I was like oh Ilya Dragunov yeah I'll take him I don't know what he's up to now nowadays uh, you know in good old WWE let's just take a look at this man's contract first of all popularity is insane so you can tell that he's doing well. He recently extended the deal. You can see here, Thursday week 4 of December, he finally agreed to a deal. Um, look at this. 116,100 per month. Yeah. Just to put that into perspective, um, we only made 200k this month. So if we had signed him, for example, there's no way we would be making bank. Um... But yeah, let's just filter this to LLW and just see who our... So apparently Shun Skywalker is our most prestigious wrestler, we could say. Uh, second is Pac, uh, Diamante, Tyler Bay, Chad Gable, who's had one match with us. Uh, May Sera, not May Hoshizuki. Uh, Ishin, Madoka Kakuta. So basically all the guys that have been wrestling for other people throughout the year. Um, clearly doing better you know Ricky Knight Jr he's still at progress at the moment but we will be changing that soon Claudio Rina Leon Slater nice Ashton Smith is all the way down here so he's 189th um, but he's up from 494 so that's really good uh, Cara Noir did not place but is now in the top 200 again Dan Maloney did him neither did Bobby Guns neither did Drew Galloway and he's at 237 his stock's going to rise next year 100% uh, Tracy Williams, Chris Brooks, De Reese, Aisha Ray, Chuck Mambo, Mark Andrews, Michael Oku, Colby Carino, who really hasn't been used that much by us, Steph Delanda, and finally Chris Ridgeway. So yeah, there's a few omissions here that I'm a little bit surprised at, but um, yeah, I think the fact that we've got 28 wrestlers in the top 500 is quite good, given that normally it's just full of WWE, AEW, New Japan, stardom people. So yeah, I will take that. Um, I think the final thing to really look at is this, and I think this is where it gets the most interesting. Um, we can just see who they've got, who their biggest stars are, um, and the champions. So I think what we're going to do is we will tour the company, um, and then we will look at titles, and then we'll go on their profile and just look at their best matches this year. So touring the company, these are the top five stars in WWE right now. Uh, Randy Orton is number one. Then Gunther, Cody Rhodes, Ilya Dragunov, and Bobby Lashley. 
the current champions, uh, Wes Lee, has been moved from NXT to WWE. I mean, it is a good three years later now. Uh, he is the Intercontinental Champion. The current Money in the Bank holder is Gunther. Uh, whether he's cashed in or not, who knows? I don't think the game operates like that anyway. The Raw Tag Team Champions is Butch and Sami Zayn. Butch is someone I've got my eyes on. Um, he's probably going to cost a stupid amount. Oh, is it 11 per month? Okay, I can maybe deal with that. Um, expires in five months. Okay, keep an eye on that. Uh, Butch and Sami Zayn are tag champs. Raw Women's Champion is Rhea Ripley. Royal Rumble winner, the most recent one, was Cody Rhodes. Sami Zayn the year before, though. SmackDown Tag Champion is Woods and Big E. So uh, New Day still going strong. Following on from this, we've got the SmackDown Women's, and it's Bailey. That's a great Bailey picture. I love that picture of her. Uh, yep, she is the Women's Champion. The United States Champion is Dexter Loomis. Go on, Dexter. How's he doing in terms of pop? 62. Wow. Uh, the Universal Champion is Carmelo Hayes. That's made me happy. He defeated Braun Strowman. Um, let's view his defences. He had a three successful defences against Matt Riddle, Butch, and Butch. So Butch is in the main event scene at WrestleMania. Two nights in a row. Wow. Some interesting people here. Johnny Gargano. I mean... Go on, Carmel. I mean, that's a great picture as well. That's a strong picture. Like, I never do WWE saves. So when I see these, this is like the first time I see half these pictures. Uh, Rhea Ripley, most recent Money in the Bank winner for the women. Most recent Royal Rumble winner is Asuka. Back-to-back, -back, a three-time Royal Rumble winner. Women's tag team is Katana Chance and Caden Carter. Cool. Nice. Uh, really fun tag team. She's uh, crazy in the ring. Well, used to be. But she's a bit more careful now after she got injured. Um, and then Bobby Lashley, look at him, looking strong as hell. He is still going, because in my AEW save, uh, Bobby Lashley has since retired. Um, not that I ever really kind of go through that in the in the other saves. But yeah, Bobby Lashley retired, because um, he left WWE, and I was like, oh, I could bring Bobby Lashley in, but it's because he'd retired. And he is, yeah, their world heavyweight champion. They've had quite a few, so Seth um, vacated it, because Seth is currently on hiatus. Um, and then Lashley picked it up. Randy Orton Bronson Reed had it, seven defences, and he's had it since um, July. Wow. So, yeah, that is WWE. Um, let's just quickly view their top 100 matches. We'll do just of this year. So, 2026, no, 25. Um, so, this was match of the year. Wait, hold on. This was match of the year at 94. That means that we were one point off of. of um, matching match of the year with our Tyler Bate and Pac match bro we're taking match of the year next year guaranteed um RK bro are still at it defeating Ilya Dragunov and Austin Theory got a 91 Riddle and Cody defeating Dragunov and Gunther with a 90 and yeah, you guys can just look at the rest I'm not going to read through them all I'll just do like the top three of each promotion um but the event of the year was New Japan so we will take a look at that uh, All Elite Wrestling, let's tour the company. Their biggest stars are here. We've got CM Punk, Moxley, MJF, Kenny Omega, and Nick Jackson. Um, their titles are CM Punk, four-time champion, recently defeating Orange Cassidy. Wow. World Tag Team Championship is Hookhausen. So, uh, Hook and Dan Housen. Interesting. Women's World is Tony Storm. Uh, someone in my comment section is going to be happy about that. Uh, Four-time champion she is as well, defeating Tay Mello. Sky Blue getting the belt at some point is awesome to see. TNT champ is Brian Danielson. Wow. Uh, taking it off Ricky Starks, Bandido. MJF had it for a little while. Some big names have had it. Wow. The FTW World is Sean Spears. Oh, okay, this is definitely the bum belt. Uh, TBS champion Hikaru Shida. Love that. Harley Cameron had the belt twice. My goodness. Um, they haven't held uh, any Owen Hart Foundation tournaments. And the trios champions is... <laughs> hold on a second. The trios champions are MJF and the Young Bucks. What is happening in the world of AEW? And have they done a full gear title eliminator? Yes, they have. Uh, Kenny Omega is a two-time champion. Moxie got it last year. Keith Lee the year before that. But that's interesting. Uh, let's just quickly view their biggest matches. So, matches, we'll go 2025. MJF Darby Allen was a 93, that matched us. Keith Lee and Bandido in the Young Bucks, a 93. 
MJF Darby Allen 92 looks like these are all on their sh TV shows no pay-per-views where's the first pay-per-view first pay-per-view match was this one at double or nothing in 89 everything else Adam Cole in a 90 rated match not in my save um, and there again Cole and Jack Perry oh interesting okay uh, cool so that is uh, AEW they got mad money 60 mil how much does WWE have oh my god 800 million all right let's look at new japan quickly i, I imagine as we get further down there'll be less interest um so i'll glaze over these a little bit more but it is still worth looking at them because i'm a big new japan fan um i love a bit of ring of honor i also quite like stardom too so yeah we're going to look at most of these um i think we'll probably stop at stardom the rest of these i might just click through so you can just see you know key personnel roster stuff like that but yeah let's tour the company of course Okada is at the top great to see Aussie Open in their top five that's awesome um, they are on my shortlist actually I'll give you a preview of my shortlist as well it's very long uh, Shingo Tagaki and um, Takahashi nice 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 um, looking at the titles um, we're just going to quickly glaze over these so Tagaki um, is there the junior heavyweight is Ren Narita big fan of Ren Narita love that guy I love his like arm strikes that he does uh Gado and G what hold on they're still wrestling what <laughs> they're still about isn't he the booker as well oh steps down as booker okay I was gonna say that's not very fair is it 56 year old and how old is Jado? 57 wow still going strong but that's the thing in New Japan there's so many old guys that still go strong uh, Evil and Sanada are the IWGP Tag Team Champions. Never open weight is Jota Suji. He's awesome. Six man, oh, double belting with Jeff Cobb and Great Okan. Uh, that's a really powerful uh, trio there. New Japan Cups winner was Shota Umino. Love that. Good old shooter. Uh, the Super Junior was Duki and Taka Mishinoku. Taka Mishinoku still going. World Tag League was Dave Finley and Toru Yano. That's a very interesting pairing. Uh, yeah, very interesting indeed. The US champ is Great Okan, so he as well is double belting. Um, the World Heavyweight... <laughs> hold on, the World Heavyweight is El Fantasmo. What world are we living in where El Fantasmo... What's his pop in Japan? It's not even that high. Who did he beat? Hold on. Um, view Defences. Master Watto, okay, that's a really interesting main event. Only a 77. Oh, actually, no, hold on. He defeated, yeah, Master Watto. And he's since defeated Takahashi Watto, Takahashi Watto. Wow. I mean, what's his stat saying now? Yeah, I mean, he's pretty consistent across the board. I mean, I love ELP. Never thought he'd be world heavyweight. And then King of Pro Wrestling is Dookie, so he is also, oh no, he was the tag league champ, yeah. Wow. Let's uh, quickly look at their top 100s uh, matches of 2025. Uh, Tagaki and Okada in an I Quit match at Wrestle Kingdom 19. That's the event we need to quickly look at as well. Oh, yeah, there's another. Oh, no, it jumps down to 83. So, I mean, we've had a better year stat-wise than the third biggest company in the game. Let's be honest, we have. That's insane. Um... NXT, I'm not going to look at matches anymore. I think we're just going to tour company, look at titles. Uh, so on to NXT, where Shawn Michaels is owner and booker. Uh, we've got, oh, see, I don't know half these. Dante Chen, whoever that is. Um, we've got Jagger Reed. I'm not familiar with NXT too much. I know this guy, um, but not by that name. Um, we've got Trick Williams, yep, and Tony D'Angelo. Okay, looking at the titles, uh, Dusty Rose Tag Team was the Creed Brothers, uh, but that was 22, so we ignore that. NXT World is Tony D'Angelo. Uh, the NXT Tag Team is this Grizzled Young Veterans or something, isn't it? They're terrible pictures. Uh, women's Champion is Tamira Mensa Stock. I've never heard of her. Maybe she's one of the people they signed on Developmental in real life, but hasn't done anything yet. Um, but, whoa, my goodness, look at those numbers. Wow, when does she, uh, one year, five months, damn it. Uh, the North American champion is Quincy Elliott, who I think has been released in real life since. Um, so yeah, wait, hold on. General manager, William Regal. Ha <laughs> ha, that's our owner now. Heritage Cup, Trick Williams, uh, Dusty Rose Tag Team, they haven't done it 
NXT Women's Tag Team is Lee McMahon and Soul Rooker. So this is definitely a regem. Uh, yeah, enters wrestling. Is she related to the McMahon? Nope, it's just fluke. Um, the replacements, they're called. What? Um, but she's got okay stats, to be fair. Great stamina, uh, which is always handy, you know what I mean? And then Soul Rooker, who's just a beautiful woman. Uh, okay, cool. Let's move on to Impact. So Impact are medium in this game, as are Ring of Honor. Uh, they've started signing like psychopaths. So there's a lot of people in Impact and Ring of Honor that were on my shortlist that are now essentially impossible to get until their contracts expire. So that's why the race to medium was so important. And unfortunately, these guys had one hell of a head start. Um, and the fact that we're not that close, not that far behind them as well is actually pretty good. But yeah, let's just um, do this. So their most popular is Gordon Gonzalez. He is a regem that came in at like 60 pop, um, as did this guy. They've done really well. I think we have Brad Punk. They've done really well in terms of regems that have just come into the game already with like 50, 60, 70 pop. Uh, Montez Ford, um, who is actually their world champion, spoiler. And of course, they've got Wyndham, a.k.a. Bray Wyatt. Rest in peace, all that stuff, you know. Um, he's not dead in the game, though. And then Trinity, which is their knockouts champion. Kind of seen most of their champions, but just to confirm, knockouts world is Trinity. Uh, Montez Ford is there. Montez Ford is great, and I'm glad that he's thriving in Impact. Uh, we've got the world tag team, which is ASOS and Chris Bay, American Bullet Club, uh, Wyndham Rotunda, uh, Stefan Andrew, and Killer Kelly. Killer Kelly is on my shortlist, and she's still currently on the handshake. I'm waiting until we get to medium, and then I'm putting a bid in for her because I love Kenna Kelly. And then the digital media is Nick Aldis, who is still with Impact in-game. I think he's exclusive as well. They took him, yeah, from uh, NWA. And then moving to Ring of Honor, quickly tour the company. They got FTR, Johnny Gargano. So he's not with WWE anymore. Uh, Wyndham is also doing double duty with Impact and Mark Davis. Mark Davis as well, in my AEW save. He's had a few singles matches. Unbelievable. Both members of... Aussie Open are insane. And then just looking at titles, a pure champion is Johnny Gargano. Survivor of the fittest, uh, they haven't done that in a while. World champion is AJ Styles. The world six man is Wyndham, uh, Hot Sauce, Tracy Williams and Tony Deppen. Tony Deppen, another guy I've got my eye on. World tag team, FTR. TV champion, Samoa Joe still? No, okay, he has lost it and won it since. Timothy Thatcher had the belt, interesting. And then the women's world is Trish Adora. I love that Trish Adora has that sky blue as well. A previous champion, Willow Nightingale. Awesome. And yet, as we said we were going to do, where is he? God, they've got a stacked roster. Prince Devitt is here. Uh, Carl Fletcher, Brian Kane, Seamus. Carl Anderson, Eric Bugenhagen. Timothy Thatcher, what have you been up to since we um, departed ways? Or parted ways, I don't know. Match history. Uh, let's look. So Larry Lee got 78. He got 78 on his debut at Ring of Honor, um, or his return, I guess. Uh, lost against Steve Macklin. Uh, he then defeated Mike Bennett and Blake Christian. 73, 69, 70. Mm, you would have been better off staying with us, mate. I'm gonna be honest. Looking at this, your you jobbing out to Bobby Guns was better than anything you've done in Ring of Honor. But hey ho, that's just how it is. But yeah, quite a lot of these top guys here. So Johnny Gargano, I think, is on a handshake as well. We could look to poach some of these. But again, I don't want to become just a WWE, AEW dumping ground, if you know what I mean. I'm trying to, like, sign interesting talent. Uh, one of which I'll actually end the episode and showing you. Uh, CMLL, I don't know if anyone cares about this, but I, I don't. But let's just, there you go. Teton, love Teton. And then the champions, oh my god. No way do they have this many champions. What is this? What is this? This is ridiculous. Do they actually have this many champions? Are these all tournaments and stuff throughout the year? This is ridiculous. Unless they, it looks like they brought a load out of, or they bought some. Volador Jr., love that guy. Back in the day, he was a baller. Uh, Teton, yeah, yeah, Mega Blanca. My goodness, uh, yeah, that's insane. And then Stardom, just a quick look at that. Of course, there were times at the top. Mercedes Monet, who is 
can't click on her here, uh, Julia, and then we've got Tan Nakano and Sayori Anu, who I think goes by a different name? I don't know. Uh, not the roster. Uh, titles. Artists of Stardom, uh, so Money, Maika, and Sayori. Uh, yep, I'm just going to go through these slowly. Mesara has a title over here, nice. Uh, Sayori again with another Tam Nakano. Uh, SWA Undisputed, so they must have bought a company out. I don't think that's one of their normal belts. Cinderella Tournament, Five Star Grand Prix, Goddess. Uh, Azumi is the future of stardom. I mean, she's the present as well. Uh, Triangle Derby, nothing. And that's a call, the New Blood Tag Team. That's so cool. Um, and it is those people. Cool. But yeah, I think Mercedes Monet is, yeah, Handshake. She's someone we could bring in as well. But again, as I've said, it's so easy to just go, oh yeah, let's just get her on a handshake. And boom, we've got Mercedes Monet. But I don't know, that doesn't feel realistic to me. Do you know what I mean? Um, like when I brought in like Tanahashi, um, Kota Ibushi, Tetsuya Naito, I brought them all in on very short term, like two, three month deals. Gave them like a title run or a title chase. They lost, they left. That's, some, that's what I would probably do with Mercedes Monet. I'd probably do like a, a two month thing leading up to a pay-per-view. She can help put over someone and then drop it. Um, actually, I think I might do that. Like bring in like FTR, have them lose a bunch of matches. Um, but yeah, one other thing I just selfishly want to check is uh, Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling because I actually am a fan. This is one of my favorite promotions just to watch um, randomly. Just to see if they brought in anyone new. Um, no, these are all regulars. Um, the pictures are great. I've, I only recently updated my picture pack. And I'm loving it. Uh, yeah, Yamashita is a monster. Uh, Suzume is one of my favourites. Um, Yuka Sakazaki, love that. Watanbe, yeah, she's a beefy little girl. And Billy Starks, until she was signed by Impact. Um, but yeah, I think that's all of this. Uh, the final thing I want to do is I'll show you my shortlist. Um, you can see I've been searching um, massively. Let's go shortlist, yes. It's a long one because I basically added everyone from WWE, everyone from NXT, because you never know who's randomly going to become available that you might go, oh, you know what? That'll be an asset. Um, like Joe Anoa'i was just the biggest fluke ever because he returned from politics and no one signed him. So I was like, fuck yeah, I'll do that. Um, actually, the same with Seth Rollins. Let me just quickly, um, Seth... Um, is he still gone? He's still, yeah, in politics, unknown return date. Let's just shortlist him because, you know, he'll be someone, even if we just bring him in short term, um, would be good. But yeah, just going back to the shortlist, it's crazy long. Um, a lot of these people actually can hire. I can hire now. I recently went through this and cleaned it up a little bit. Um, there's a bunch of random people that, I don't know who the fuck she is. Oh, she's in NXT, okay. Um, but yeah, there's a few unemployed. So if I filter just by unemployed, like all of these I could bring in now. Like Jordan Devlin is still a bad boy, um, still toxic, um, but I might just do it anyway. You know, fuck it. Uh, Martin Stone could be good, Ravy Davy. Look, these are a few British guys. Shotzi is now unemployed. She could be useful, maybe. Tyson T Bone, former NXT UK guy. Yeah. Um, and then if we um, just put that back to any, and then we go shortlisted yes and to hire. So this is everyone that's available right now you can see there's not as many so these are all the people that are on um, non-exclusive deals that we could bring in um, Alexis Falcon great little talent Axel Tisher Charlie Evans awesome wrestler Drew Parker's killing it in Japan um, which makes me want to bring him over because he's got the great in-ring stats um, Humberto Carrillo is available Hansen I definitely want to bring in uh, Ida Lesnar no relation to Brock I don't think um Personal info, no, but you know, it's just Ida Lesnar. I think the fact that I feel like that could be Brock Lesnar's daughter. Like, if you look like squint a little bit, she looks like the girl from Logan. Um, but yeah, she's got okay stats. Someone that could maybe grow in the pre show, I don't know. Um, but yeah, a few more people here. Kira Hogan, she's got great, like, here, getting so good here as well. Um, Killer Kelly, we already mentioned. I don't know who she is, but she's hot, so I just hit shortlist mariah may as well she's on excursion in um mexico which ends in three months the second that excursion ends putting a bit in the second um masha baby i will bring you back one day um i will 
Um, Amari as well looks really good. Um, he's currently in progress. And this is the man I wanted to show you guys. So Will Ospreay, as we know in previous um, times we've looked at this, he left because he went on hiatus. And usually when you shortlist someone in this game, they say to you, ah, oh, we'll tell you all the news, you know, whether they start dating someone, they're injured, all of that. I get all the crap in my inbox. No one told me that Will Ospreay returned to wrestling. This happened week two, December. Um, I don't think he's had any matches. Um, no, he hasn't. Did he? When was his last match? His last match was October 2024. So he's 100% rusty. We know he's going to be rusty. Um, but that hasn't stopped me from popping a cheeky bid in. Um, for some reason, he doesn't want to sign exclusively at all, no matter how much money I threw at him. Um, so I've offered him a handshake deal. We're obviously going to take priority over progress. He's loyal to New Japan, um, which is probably why he hasn't um, done anything. So we'll probably have him for a while. We'll get him good again, and then he'll probably fuck off. But Will Ospreay is someone that will be coming to LLW. And just in time, because we're about to hit medium, baby. Um, but yeah, the rest of the um, shortlist is just ridiculously long. Um, I'll just kind of slowly scroll through it while I kind of finish off talking because there's not much else to show is there um, yeah sorry that this is kind of a meh episode feel free to skip it um, in all honesty the next episode we will be back in the groove of things the first two shows of the new year will be happening we'll see the fallout from you know Pack becoming um, our inaugural London Zone champion we'll also have Ashton Smith's reaction I guess to no longer being able to compete for the Kings title um, and you know what happens with Anoa'i's global empire will it continue to grow is Soraya now next in line for Rena's belt or is it um, Megan Bain just have to wait and see but yeah that's the short list that's the end of the episode thank you very much for watching um, please like comment subscribe share do it all and I'll see you in the next one.